so before I start, um, I just want to make a very personal remark. Um, I'm, I'm in kind of schizophrenic uh, world when I'm where I'm living, because I'm originally from Poland. So as you could see on Lance Bennett uh, slides, uh, the country that elected with 40 percent the most populistic probably party in uh, in Europe. And in the same time, I'm living and doing my research in France, where we just conquered, thank you, where we just conquered the populist candidate in the elections. Uh, so I'm in between those, 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 those two worlds where I am living. And I would like to present you today <coughs> something which goes a little bit back in time, into 2014 elections for the European Parliament and how uh, populism was connected to Facebook and to communication on the Facebook uh, by political, uh, political party. So very, very briefly, because Sven, after of me, will be doing everything theoretical, so I will just very briefly go through the uh, ideas where we want to go with our research, which is a very, very new thing that we, uh, that we just got the data on. Uh, so what we try to do is we try to uh, understand how the, po how the communication on Facebook worked in the sense of populism in content and in style. So was there any effect and how this effect, uh, how this communication style influenced the reactions from the people that were on Facebook uh, during the electoral uh, time, during the uh, European Parliament elections? Uh, so we are using the coding, uh, I will go back to that in a second, uh, that are uh, trying to see the communication uh, in content and <coughs> in style. Uh, we know and we are trying to see uh, how different characteristics of the party, so how their uh, populism uh, uh, defined by the political scientists, as well as their extremists on the right and on the left, uh, as, as well as being in the government or being in the parliament, how it influences their uh, usage of the uh, of the uh, of the populism in the communication, knowing that social media communication is attracting a lot of people uh, to uh, participate in politics, especially in uh, in uh, in the context of uh, of election, that the social media allowed for this interactivity, uh, that social media allowed for the co for discussing the issues with uh, with parties, and that. Uh, a lot of social media and Facebook, especially affordances, uh, they allowed for the interactivity and how this interactivity is used by political uh, political parties. So what we are doing, we are using the two coding schema. This is the coding schema. This is that is coming from the uh, the latest issue on the information communication in society and. This is communication in content. So what is the content of the post? We measure what is the content of the post with all those, uh, uh, with all those uh, measurements. Uh, and then we move into the style of communication. So what kind of uh, language usage uh, uh, and how the language is used by political parties and how this influences the responsiveness of, uh, of people who are on Facebook. Uh, so the two research questions that we are asking is the populism style and pop populism in, uh, in, uh, in content. Uh, how does that work in the, in the context of the party economic and cultural populism? Uh, how does this work in context of light, uh, right and left uh, political uh, ideology, uh, party size and then party positioning? And then the second research question is we try to run some regressions on the responsiveness by the people uh, on Facebook. So we look on the activity like likes and shares and interactivity like comments and controlling by all the Facebook affordances, we try to see how populism is really influencing this communication. Uh, methods. So what we do, we had data from, uh, from uh, 112 parties. Uh, in 14 European countries, uh, which gave us around eight, uh, 11 uh, thousand posts, uh, we, ra re we run a random sample out of that, and uh, we finish with around 4,000 uh, posts done by the parties during two weeks before uh, the <coughs> uh, elections to European Parliament in 2014. We use in our research. Uh, I, I the scale that was created based on the Chapel Hill study by Inglehart and Norris. 
And here I would like to make a point to what Lance Bennett was talking about in his, in his presentation when he was talking that we have to talk about the extreme right. But the question is, what do we mean by the extreme right? Because as you will see in a second on, on my graphs, in fact, there is this difference, especially in Europe, that we see the extreme being extreme right, economically speaking, is something completely different as being extremely right, uh, uh, culturally speaking. Uh, and I will show you my graph in, in a second. So we are using those indexes that they are creating, uh, and we are using this cultural and economic cleavages to define our parties, where they are. And then on that we put our, uh, our measurement of populism in communication. Just a brief description of parties and how they look like on the scale from left to right. And I'm not sure how to interpret that, but maybe the, the assumption that I would make is that, in fact, in 2014, we didn't see as strong populism as we see it now. Because at least the right-wing uh, right populism. Because what we see is if we make an average of the parties that we are having in our sample, which are most of the parties per, per country, in fact, they are still somewhere in the center, uh, somewhere near. Uh, they are not that much extreme as we, will, uh, as we would expect. Uh, they are more extreme on the cultural, though, than they are on the economical, uh, economical populism. Uh, my country, Poland, as you can see, even <coughs> though we know that there, are, there is very strong populistic country, still the rest of the parties they are making up for this very strong right-wing cultural populism that uh, law and justice is doing. So the, to go to our results, so how those parties, populist parties, on, uh, on, uh, uh, are doing on Facebook. <coughs> so what we found out is that around one third of all the communication had at least one <coughs> element that was populist. Uh, is it a lot? I think it is if we take into, into account that the, uh, that the <coughs> communication is really wi widespread and that the uh, as you will see in a second, that the populistic communication is spread around parties. Uh, we compared this is populism in content, this is populism in style. If we compare the two, as you can see, the populism in style, so how they are expressing, is really much more visible and is much more used by the political party, definitely much more uh, than the, po than the uh, populism in content. Uh, especially for this use is emotion and emotional approach to different, to different uh, political standpoints. Now if we look on the parties and how parties are divided, uh, this is uh, the populism in content and in style, in content uh, on the left and in style on the right, uh, according to the political views of the parties. And as you can see here, we do not find as strict patterns as, uh, uh, as, as Sven also found in, the, in their data for 2017 data. Uh, what we find out, of course, there is the right-wing extreme, which is using populism in the most extreme uh, uh, way. But for the other parties, we do not see very, very, very strong patterns in, in, in usage of the, of the populism. If we look on uh, party size, this is something uh, which I think is quite substantial to, to claim who is really using populism and why. So those are the parties that want to get to the, to the parliament. Uh, so the major fringe parties who are in, in our coding, those parties who are really just under the line to get into the parliament that uh, used most of the populism both in content and in style. Uh, if we look on the, uh, on the positioning towards EU, uh, again, those who are very strongly against European Union. They do use a lot of populistic uh, content uh, and parties uh, in, in opposition. So this, was, this is confirming the, the results also from 2007. Now, if we move to these indexes that Pippa Norris and, and Inglehart proposed on culture and economic populism, I wanted to show you the graph that is probably the only graph that I'm having that is really showing the very populistic party that we think about them and that they are visible on this on this on the uh, on the populistic scale so 
all the parties that you will expect to be populist, they are populist. And you will see in a second, this is probably the only so clear picture with the xenophobic language, which shows that parties, uh, both on the extreme, uh, extreme right of the cultural populism and some of the uh, extreme left economic populism do show the populi populistic communication. However, if we look and if we move to other outcomes and the other usage of communication uh, items, oversimplification, a lot of parties, regardless where they are on the economic or cultural populism scale, all are using it. Same if we use on the fear. Uh, a lot of parties are using this communication <coughs> in fear. So maybe it goes a little bit to your remark from the morning that in fact the parties are taking over the, the items from the populist parties and even the mainstream parties are talking about the issues or are using the issues used normally by the populist parties. Again, party as only representative of citizens, wherever you look on the graph, they are there and they are using this kind of language. Now let me move very briefly for to our second research question. So what is the community response? So how people are responding on Facebook uh, to this pom populism in style and in context. So we run some regressions. We use country fix effects. We are controlling for absolutely everything that is possible to control in Facebook. So all the affordances. And then we also put the uh, party characteristics that I have just shown you. And of course, we are using both uh, indexes for populism in style and populism in content. And here is the regression. And as you can see, there is a lot of blank places. Uh, in fact, what we find out is that what is really important and what is really crucial to attract people to communicate is interactivity, which means that if parties responding to whatever uh, the community members are doing, then it makes it, it brings more people to like, share, and come. However, if we go to populism in content and in populist uh, in style, there is not that much, uh, uh, not that much result. So interactivity, but then claiming the representation of the people. This is what brings, uh, what brings uh, likes, shares, and comments. Populism in style is definitely much more important than populism in content. Uh, populism in style, especially here, is attracting enormous amount of the comments and enormous amount of how people are reacting. We don't know, and this is the, 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 uh, the, the, the issue that we have to face with our data, we do not have the knowledge of what, how, what, what is the content of those comments. Are they positive or are they negative? This we don't know. However, we know that if you, if if uh, especially if you look on the emotions, emotional style and the emotional approach to the populism is very important for, uh, for receiving any kind of reciprocity from your community. Uh, the only thing is that is negatively is the bullshitting. So if the parties are bullshitting too much, so if they are doing storytelling, then, then uh, in European context at least, it is not attracting people, it's rather uh, the, the opposite. So those are the results. Thank you for your attention.